Ashley, how are you? I'm good, good. I'm Colleen. So nice to meet you. And you too. So as part of um, this process, we want to talk a little bit about makeup and how you show up to the world and how, as you're so beautiful already, makeup can just help you meet the world with a really fresh um, projection of what you already are. So tell me a little bit about what you do now as far as makeup. I just like put on mascara and a little bit of eyeliner. I don't really do anything okay. major. Well, what we have here is we have a really nice um, basic but complete set of makeup that I would love to show you how you can use um, whether you are working or just out and about and you want to look your best. Um, are you open to learning a really good routine for that? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, what we have here is your whole spread. So I'm just going to walk you through with basic ways to do things quickly and easily to put your best foot forward and look your best, okay? All right. So have you put any moisturizer on your skin today? Okay. I'm just going to start with the moisturizer. Um, so this is all yours. So if you just, after you wash your face in the morning, um, start with a moisturizer and that will keep your, the hydration balanced and ready for the rest of everything you're gonna put on your makeup. And you can of course do this with your hands, but I'm gonna do it with a sponge, okay? But you can do that. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep your eyes closed for me. And we'll just get your skin prepped and ready. Of course, we've gotten you products that we think will be easy for you to use, but um, all the tips that we're going to give you, you can apply to other products as well, okay? So does that feel okay on your skin? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the first step that we're going to start with is a foundation, and we've chosen a color that's going to just even out your skin tone entirely. And there's many ways for, that you can apply foundation, but I think a really easy way is to just use a sponge. You can also use a brush, but we're going to use a sponge today, okay? So you can either put the foundation directly onto the sponge, but I actually prefer to work it off of my hand, so I just put a little bit on the back of my hand, and then I work with a sponge off of that. So I'll just take a little bit, okay, onto the sponge. And then what I'm going to do, we'll just tuck your hair. Um, I'm just going to put little dots on your forehead and your nose and your cheeks. Just kind of press the makeup into the skin. And then from there, see how I'm using the wide side of the sponge? I'm just going to take the wide side and I'm just going to blend it all in. You already have a really nice skin tone, um, but this is just Number one, it's gonna be a very good base for the rest of the makeup and even out any inconsistencies in color and texture in your skin. Okay? All right. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. And you can close your eyes so you can put the foundation right over your eyes as well. And I think what's really nice about makeup is not to um, change your beauty or change your looks, but it's just a really good way to draw out your best features so that as you're showing up as your best self, you can feel the most beautiful. Sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna blend this. Look up for me a little bit with your face. There you go. I'm just gonna blend this foundation down onto your neck because we don't want there to be any lines of demarcation so that we can't see where it starts and where it stops, okay? Mm -hmm. Does it feel okay on your skin? Okay. And I didn't use too much, so I'm just going to put a little bit more on your eyelids um, as a base for the rest of the makeup that we're going to use. So this is safe to go all over your face. You think you'll be able to do that yourself? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And absolutely, if you have any questions this whole time, go ahead and ask. All right. Cool. And if you do have a blemish, you can just use a little bit more of the foundation in that area and just blend, 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 okay? Does it feel okay? You have really nice skin. Thank you. Okay, step one. Do you feel the difference in between the smoothness of the texture of your skin? 
I do. Just like that. Yeah. Doesn't that feel nice? It does feel really nice. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Okay. After that step, we will move on to, you mentioned about contour. So contour is the, the darkness or the lightness of, of certain areas. And what that, that's going to do for you is just um, make parts of your face more highlighted or more shadowed so that you have more dimension in your skin. Sound good? Sounds good. So we're going to use this palette here. And this is the darkest on this side, and then the lightest over here. And then this is going to be a nice mid um, shade to just kind of highlight everything. So first things first, we're gonna work with the dark shades, and I'll show you where we're gonna put the dark shades, okay? All right. For this, um, let's use this big brush here. Okay. Right. We're gonna start in the dark. And I'm gonna start right underneath your cheekbones here. I'm just gonna dust the dark color underneath the cheekbone, okay? Mm -hmm. See how I'm going like in a, in a soft circular motion here? Mm -hmm. Right underneath your cheekbone. And you'll get lots of practice doing this, I'm sure. Now I'm gonna go right under your jaw. I'm still working with the darkest color, okay? Anything that's darker than your skin is gonna make it receive, and anything that's lighter than your skin project or go forward. And I'm gonna continue this along your hairline. This is still with the dark color, okay? Mm -hmm. So it came hairline underneath your cheekbone and underneath So it's like jaw. a three? Yeah. Do you see what I mean by that? So you can also think of it as like a big E shape, like E this way. You see that kind of? Yeah, I do. Okay, cool. Awesome. Let's do the other side. And this is subtle, so we don't want you to look like you have different colors all over your face. On with the foundation a little bit. But I like just a little bit of color. 
you're so pretty anyway. This is just giving your face a little bit more dimension and color. Thanks. You see? Yeah. Okay, cool. And we can always come back and put a little bit more blush on right at the end, but we just wanted to see where that went. Make sense? Okay, moving on to your eyes. So you've got your eyebrows shaped and they look beautiful. That's a really solid um, framer for your face already. And I don't think you need to do anything to color your eyebrows in because they are really They're a good shape. They're a really good shape. They're a great shape, yeah. We're gonna work with eyeshadows. And the contour of eyeshadows works the same way. So the darker colors are gonna make places recede and the lighter colors are gonna make other places protrude. So we just wanna work with something, um, a natural look. So we're gonna use, tell me, do you like more of the, um, the lighter neutrals or do you like more of the darker neutrals? What would you prefer to work with? Mm, I like lighter. Lighter neutrals, okay. Yeah. Why don't we, if you're comfortable with it, we'll do this middle shade on your eyelid and then we'll highlight with a gold and do just a little bit of a darker in your crease for contour. Sound good? Okay. So, and you can kind of remember these and use your own, like you have many colors to work from, but I'm gonna use this very middle shade here and I'm gonna go on to your entire eyelid right up until the crease, okay? So close your eyes. And remember, we put some foundation down and that acts as a really nice base for your um, eyeshadow to adhere to. And again, this just brightens everything up. We don't want to do anything too dramatic so that you could wear this look pretty much anywhere you went and felt cool and confident. And you're putting um, classy foot forward into the world. Same color right onto the other eyelid, okay? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can feel, but open your eyes for me. So the base color, I'm just working right into the natural where the crease is, but I'm not going past it, okay? We'll use a different highlight color We'll use something a little bit lighter all the way over here for your brow bone, and that is really going to be a highlight. So this will be the lightest color that we use right underneath your brow, and that just pushes that um, bone a little bit forward and just makes it highlighted and really pretty, beautiful contour. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. So do you see where I put that? Yeah. Do you like those colors? I do. Yeah? Cool. And I always look at taking a few minutes, five to 10 minutes to put your makeup on. It's just another extra self-care part of the day to make sure that you're showing up, feeling your most awesome self so that you can serve in the best way possible. A little bit more. There is a much lighter highlight color. And while that would be very light, it would be fun to use the super light color. You could put it right in the corner of your eye and it's just like a pop of um, brightness. That's a little good technique if, you're, if your eyes are feeling tired. Mm -hmm. You can put the lightest color right on the corner and it wakes everything up. Okay. And we haven't done any of the contour yet, but do you see where those highlights have gone? Yeah, I do. Okay, so we did the medium color, which was right in the middle on your eyelid. And then we did the light color on your brow bone and the lightest color right on the inside of your eye. Make sense? Let's do this medium dark shade here. Okay. And I'm gonna work it right into the crease. So you can actually keep your eyes open and I'm just gonna show you where I'm going. See where your natural crease is? In between the eyebrow bone and the... Exactly. Eyebrow. And I'm just pressing that medium dark color right into the crease and I'm blending it um, into the crease just to create a little bit more contour. Do you see that? I do. You like it? I do like it. Okay. Very natural and pretty. Again, we were using this color here. Okay. And you can just, and when you're doing it on yourself, a really good way is to take your brush 
and just kind of set it into the ledge. Yours is, your crease is very easy to see anyway, but that's where you're working that color, okay? Mm -hmm. What's great about this eyeshadow palette is you can use it wet or dry. And so if you wanted to use the very dark color for eyeliner, so I'll show you how you can get this wet and actually use it as eyeliner. So I would get the brush wet, which I'll do in just a second, and then we'll use this as eyeliner, okay? Mm -hmm. Just as um, an alternate to regular eyeliner. So I'm gonna dip the wet brush into the dark eyeshadow, and I'm just gonna set it right, close your eyes, into the lash line, and use it as an eyeliner. It's very, very subtle but it's something that you could do if you just wanted to work out of this palette. And I'm using the flat side of the brush so I can actually set the color right into the lash line. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do it on this side as well. Very subtle. We're gonna do it with eyeliner as well, but I just wanted to show you that you could do that, okay? All right. What color of eyeliner would you prefer to work with? Black. Black? Okay. So one tip about eyeliner is that I think it can be a very good way to define your eyes and make them look more expressive, but you don't wanna go overboard or it kinda of does the opposite and it makes them look smaller. So I wanna use a technique um, Again, let's use um, a brush. After we apply it, I want to use this flat small brush to blend it, okay? And so on the top of your eye, so if you'll close your eye, I want you to just feel this. I'm gonna stay really close to the lash line and I'm putting the color almost into the lash line to make the line. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we don't want there to be a gap in between the lashes and um, the color because then it looks unnatural and what this eyeliner really does is it makes the lash line look a little bit more um, dense. Does that make sense? So I haven't blended it yet but it's nice if you want to see how close I put it into see how close I put it in in there? Okay. And then you would take the brush and I'm just going to go back and forth to kind of blend it in to make sure that there's no separation between the lash line and the color. See how soft that is? That is really, that's really nice. You like it? Good. Do you want to try it on the other side? Uh, sure. I'll be sure to help you blend it. So take the mirror, I'll hold it for you so that you can see. And just use really small strokes. Yeah, you tell me where to. And then, and then keep it really close mm -hmm, to the lash line. Yep. So that you're setting it right into the. Yep. So that there's no separation between the lashes and the color. Awesome. And you can make it a little bit thicker if you prefer that. But the point is to really set the color into the lash line. Beautiful. Do you want to blend it? Sure. Looks awesome. She's an easy student. Hmm. Yep, you got it. Cool. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom, except so that we don't close off um, the shape of the eye, I'm gonna focus the color on the last two thirds of the eye, and then we'll blend the color in towards the middle. But when we do a solid line from the outside to the inside, sometimes it closes everything down. So we can blend the color in towards the middle, but we're gonna focus the color on the outside. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, look up. And this is a screw um, applicator, so when it gets too um, little, you just screw it up. Look up. And I'm staying really close to your lash line. To make it more dramatic, you can put the color into that water line above your lashes if you wanna blend it. So that's where you put the color, and then I'm gonna blend. A really fun technique as well is you can always use an eyeshadow to blend, and it sets it at the same time. So I'm just dipping that small brush into the um, eyeshadow, look up, and then I'm gonna blend it. 
And I always think eyeliner blended looks much more natural. Not that we blend it out so that you can't see it, but so there's no start and stopping point with the color. You like that? I do, I've never actually known that I could do that. Yeah. And I don't think that eyeliner on the bottom is necessary, but if you look at this side and this side, because we blended it all out, this actually makes the eye look bigger. Do you see that? Isn't that yeah. cool? I see that. Okay. Try it on the other side. Me. Yes. It's good. Can you see into the mirror? I'm scared. You got it. That's the best thing. Makeup is not forever. It's just the way to express. We can always start over. Let's see. Yeah, I would stop it in the middle like that, right? And then, that's okay. And then put a little bit in your waterline above your eyelashes, and then we'll blend it all together. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, above your lashes, just a little bit into the lashes. Let's see, perfect, just like that. That's great. And then you blend. And you can dip into the dark eyeshadow. That kind of sets it so that when, um, if you tear it all, it doesn't get Runny, and I would blend it from the outside corner into the into the middle. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I can tell you are, but you just want to use a really light hand so that you're not moving the color too much. It's just a simple blend. I think it's good. That's it's all practice. It's really good. Let's see. I love it. I also like, I don't know if you realized you did this, but you left a space in between your top eye line and the bottom eye line. That's good, because it opens everything up. I'm gonna show you how to put a highlight there so that it really opens everything up. If you're being very dramatic with makeup and you did a big, dark circle around your eyes, it's dramatic and it looks funky, but it tends to close the eye down. Mm -hmm. And for this look, we're looking to open everything up. Yeah. Make sense? So that you're wide eye and free. Okay, um, we talked about highlight, so I want to show you to take the light color again, and I'm just going to go right on the outside and put that light color right on the corner. Put again, pop it open. My eyes look huge. You like it? I do. Cool. We haven't even gotten a mascara yet. I'm really <laughs> nice. Do you like the change though? I think do. you can do it? I think you can do it, definitely. Okay, let's move on to mascara give you a few tips and tricks. Um, it's always good to take the applicator, first off, take it out, and then there's a lot of product on the wand, so just go ahead and remove some of the product so that you are not having to fight with using too much product on your eyelashes. So I just get some of it off first, like that, okay? And then I'll do one eye, but I do you prefer to practice on your right eye? I can put it on your left. That would be okay. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the base of your eyelash, and I'm just going to rest the applicator there, and I'm going to move it back and forth before I extend, because we want more of the product at the base of our lashes to give the depth, and then we're just extending the, the makeup out towards the end of the lashes, but we don't want too much product on the end of, of our lashes. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm just going to sit it right at the base and I'm going to wiggle it just a little bit to put the product there and then I'm going to extend it all the way out. Oh, cool. And then I'll let you practice because you always get a better application, I think, doing it on yourself. And if you ever feel like you get too much product, you can always take a Q-tip or um, a tissue and just run it back and forth over your eyelashes to kind of get any excess product off of the ends. So I'll let you practice with both sides. That's good though, especially if you get a clump or something. Okay? You practice? I'll hold them in for you. This side or this side? 
Uh, why don't you try both? I didn't put too much on there. I'll hold your hair back for you. Beth, you tell me how to hold it. No. You can place it for yourself, and I'll hold it there. Yep, and then extend it towards the ends. Uh-huh. And you have nice long eyelashes, yeah. So you can blink into it a little bit. And I don't suggest using a waterproof mascara um, because I think it dries your eyelashes out. I think I got one like random or right there that has a lot on it. So you can use a Q-tip and just kind of move it back and forth over your eyelashes to kind of remove some of the product. As long as you do it right away, it doesn't dry too quickly. Yeah. And then your bottom eyelashes are really long too. And I would just basically set it right at the base of your eyelash and don't extend it way too far so that you don't get it on your skin. Yeah, just like that, exactly. And yeah, that's brand new mascara, so you're gonna get an extra too much, but we'll use a Q-tip to get that out because we don't want that. That's okay, it's okay. There you go. So basically when that happens, you can just use the Q-tip and lift it out of there. That's why I always get most of the product off of my brush before I put it on because it's a lot and it's a brand new tube of mascara. Look up for me. You can always come back and remove little mistakes. It's no biggie. Perfect. Feel okay? Mm -hmm. since I only did it a little bit. Yeah. Perfect. Feel good? Mm -hmm. That looks very pretty. Open. All right. Okay, put that away. Are you feeling more vibrant with each step? Yeah. Good. Okay. So we got you two different colors of lip gloss, and I love this because you can wear one by themselves or you can wear them both, and I'm going to tell you the difference. So the darker color, which is just a coral, is a really nice shade to go over your entire lip. And then the really light shade, which has even more shine, we're gonna put right in the middle of your lips to create dimension within your lips even. So you can wear one of these by yourself, but we're just gonna do the super shiny one right in the middle. So we're gonna take the coral color right out of the applicator and just go right over your lips. You can definitely choose more color um, with different product, but this is just a really fun neutral. Give your lips some glisten. I think we have, you can um, experiment with um, lip liner, which gives more color and definition to the lip. If you play with a lip liner, make sure to fill in your whole entire lip so you're not just getting the line around the outside of your lip. You like that color? I do like that. I color. love that color. Looks really nice on you. And then we're just gonna take the super shiny and do it right in the middle to create um, a highlight. And if you wore the super shiny by itself, it would be it would read clear. It wouldn't really have a color to it. I like that. I like it. You do? Mm -hmm. Good. So um, finally, I think it's always nice to just look, do a once over with your makeup and make sure that nothing is out of place. So I think it looks really good. Um, I like to finish with blush just to give your cheeks an extra pop because as the, the minutes have gone on, it usually kind of sits into the skin and relaxes a little bit. For the blush, rather, we'll go into your cheeks and into your hairline and just kind of give you a little bit kiss of color all the way around. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. doing this and looking your best all the time. I think this is a look that you could easily do for yourself in 10 to 15 minutes once you practice. You think it's possible? I do too. How do you feel? I feel pretty. Yeah? 
Do you yeah. like? You like the colors? I think she looks awesome. Do you feel good though? Do you feel like you got some good tips? Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions?